Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki alongside University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz and my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. Hurricanes coming off a big win at home against Bethune-Cookman and coming up this week, Miami at home again. Four o'clock kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium against Central Michigan. Coach, congratulations on the win over Bethune. Your first win, the team's first win, a great day all the way around. Felt really good. Yeah. Felt really good to, to, to get in the locker room after the game with a victory. Uh, we have... Since January 14th, we have put these guys through a lot. They have worked really, really hard, and you want to see them get that reward yeah. and just to feel the, the victory and the team effort. And it was a game that so many people got in, so so many people in that locker room afterwards felt a contribution to our success. Um, it was a great day overall. The best part of the day for me was Jimmy Murphy. I think we should just start right there. <laughs> and, and I have, in all my years, and I'm sure yours as well, I've never heard anybody volunteer to ever do gassers for somebody. Oh, yeah. Your whole team did, right? Everybody, everybody was willing to run for him. But what a uh, – and I heard a comment, and I guess it was by the broadcaster, that everybody's got a Jimmy Murphy. He's wrong. There's no. only one Jimmy Murphy. There's no doubt. Right? There's only one. And, uh, and again, it didn't surprise anybody on our, on our team. Nobody. They, they had – the locker room has the utmost respect for, for who Jimmy Murphy is on and off the field. They know he's a guy that would do anything – uh, for any guy on our team, and keep him, and, and and I think everybody got you know he is not a guy that just went in the last drive. He's he is a starter for us on two special teams and one of our top guys, you know, and and down to punt at the one yard line and was voted captain of our football team a year ago, and we had to you know because of depth issues he had to go to running back in training camp and watching him run we said we go this guy's going to score a touchdown on somebody and and i i don't think it's going to be his last no you know i think you also made a great point that your guys have been working at this everybody since january the 14th right uh looking for a reward looking for a result it happened to be bethune cookman but uh, if you're going to put in that much work and keep on fighting and you were close in the first two it doesn't matter who the opponent is winning feels good right we're well like what we've talked about every week we're we are the opponent you know, and it, it's the way that we play, it's the way that we prepare, and it, it's the, the level of the intensity that we play with. And that was a big point we made going into the game is we can do two things. We, you know, we can say we are more talented than them and we can rest on that. Or we can say, why don't we try to play much, much harder than they do for much, much longer, which we should be able to do because of our training and we should be able to do because we have more depth than they do. And that we feel like is what we want to be able to hang our hat on week in week out if we continue to play with with unbelievable effort and just and just relentless strain in everything we do then your talent has a chance to talk and has a chance to show and i think you're starting to see some of that with some of our guys and all of a sudden say wow look at that guy pop look at that guy pop and we hope that continues to happen mm -hmm. you know man it's very easy to to get all hyped up after a win but the thing that i've noticed through the three games is that Nobody has, has given up hope as far as the players go. And that's not something that any, every team in the country can say, number one. But you haven't lost any effort. If anything, right. they've increased it. And that, in this day and age, I believe, especially with the limited hours, is, is nearly impossible to accomplish. So all you have to do is put on any channel of coachable on any Saturday. It is very hard to bring the same team to the stadium two weeks in a row. That's right. Yeah. And all you have to do is look at some of the scores, or you know, this past weekend all around the country, and it doesn't matter whether you're playing an FCS team like we did. There's mm -hmm. some people that played an FCS team as big favorites that came away losers on Saturday, and the reason why is because they weren't the same team they were the week before. So that is the training that David Feely and our guys down in the weight room started back in January. Of when we come into this building, we come to work. You know, when we when we run on Green Tree in the summer, we come to work. And that's the point. If you can get a team to just give maximum effort at all times, that's why I mentioned the opponent doesn't really matter. Now there's some things in the game that we've had in the first couple where a play here and a play there, of course. But over the long haul, you know, as, as the whole season unfolds, if you can really bring it and give everything you have every week, you have a chance to win all of our ball games, and, and, and you're going to become very hard to beat. Along those lines, how much of your job is about shaping in molding we can talk about x's and o's a lot but sometimes isn't the job to convince a player on either a what he can be or what he is right there's no doubt and it happens on two levels it happens on the individual level mm -hmm. where you're trying to maximize every individual's potential but then it also happens on the team level right where if everybody improves their level of play mm -hmm. then the team of course improves as well and i think you've seen that 
Well, I think we've mentioned that before the season starts. We're, we were, we're, we're not going to be a team that sits around and bemoans everything to execution because our execution, we know, will improve as year goes on. We're going to, you know, you're always replacing guys. You're playing with young guys in the secondary. Holy cow, two freshman starters in the offensive line, a first-time starter a quarterback, a redshirt freshman. Well, obviously, they're all going to get better as year goes on. What, can, what, though, from day one has to be on point? Their effort, their intensity, their passion, their mental toughness. So we have made such a big point to make sure that those are the non-negotiables. Understanding, of course, the more at-bats they get, the better they're, they're, they'll see the game better, their execution level will be better, all that type of stuff. But what's exciting is if they can play at a high level now, as they get more comfortable mm-hmm. with the execution level, I think there's a lot of optimism what this thing could be. And, Manny, make no mistake, a lot of people in this game have to be taught how to win. Sure. Right? I mean, everybody says, oh, well, I was great. Now, at, at what you did in high school or what you did – two weeks ago mean nothing. You really, there is, there's a lesson to be taught in learning how to win or hating to lose, however right. you want to brand it. And there's a couple of types of games that you have to learn how to win. We have to learn how to win a close game, mm-hmm. obviously because we've lost two close games. But, but these games where they end up being, of course, great separation on the scoreboard, they never start that way. And we talked to our team before the game about the adversity of expectation. Um, when you get in a game like this and, and you know you're a huge favorite and everybody's expecting you to win and all of a sudden there becomes a pressure to play with style points, you know, as if every play should be a first down and every play on defense should be a sack or a tiger for loss. And, you know, and w- w- when, you go, when you go play a really difficult game against a top-ranked team, let's say, mentally you prepare yourself for the natural ups and downs of a game because that's going to happen. We all know that. When you play a team you think you're much, much better than, you don't prepare yourself the same way. You think it's going to be easy. When you think it's going to be easy and you get in the game, the game will always provide adversity. Mm-hmm. You're, no one's perfect. And by the way, the other guys, they try too. <laughs> but then you're surprised. So then when negative things happen, you feel the strain of the, oh my gosh, and the negative energy. And in fact, that happened to us in the first quarter. We didn't come out and play our best in the first quarter. 7 nothing after 1. And I was telling our guys, can you feel it? Can you feel that weight of the expectation? Like, why are we not winning by 100 already? And that's not what happens. Keep away, keep hammering away, keep hammering away. No one thought that a simple inside zone play would be the touchdown that we break. That's exactly what it ended up being. You got a uh, shutout in the game, and those are not easy to come by yeah. either. And shutouts usually are generated also with great will, effort, and pride. Shutouts are special. They're really hard to get because you, obviously you got to be on point for right. 60 minutes. Um, but, it's, you know, it's, it's a great thing. It's a... It's a team goal, and a great example of why is because it is hard to score if you have to drive the field against the Miami defense. Average starting field position, I think, for Bethune Cook, and I think was their own 18, something like that, their own 22, somewhere really backed up. So they had to go 80 every time. Why is that? Because our offense only had one three and out. Why did our offense have great field position? Our defense created 10 three and outs. And when that happens and you're constantly flipping the field, and our, our, our punt rush team was phenomenal, mm-hmm. uh, we didn't block a punt, but boy, that guy sped up. So we allowed a 20 yard punts, 25 yard punts. So you're always playing half court. We, we, we had it work the other way a year ago. So our guys are starting to understand how the offense affects the defense and the special teams in the middle, and we all play on each other. So really, everybody has a hand in the shutout. Mm-hmm. In today's college football, everybody wants to talk about the air raid and the, the RPO and the pass and the pass, but. I see what's happening here is Miami's developing a very physical running game. Yep. And when you talk about closing a game out or a half, you know, before the half or whenever you need it, there's really nothing more intimidating than having that. Exactly. And when you have backs who can take, again, a play that is a simple inside zone play and go all the way for a touchdown, mm-hmm. that's how you become explosive. And you don't have to have the mentality as a play caller, oh, I've got to call a play to try to create a 50-yard gain on this play. And, and – we should have great backs at Miami. We should always recruit great mm-hmm. running backs. There should be great running backs that want to come here because of the legacy of guys that have been here in the past. And when they can see that you can get in an offense that's very multiple, a lot of formations, a lot of different running run plays, a lot for the defense to really try to comprehend. Um, and then we get those guys loose in the secondary and let their ability shine. It's, it's been fun to watch. And guess who benefits? Again, the defense. 48 snaps of defense in a game. In this day and age of college, yeah. you're normally defending 70 or 80. That, that's amazing. Now, so- again, Partially because of three and outs, and partially because of their offense possessing the football. This week, uh, the Hurricanes are home 4 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. I know you want to continue to make that a great home field advantage. It's Central Michigan, coached by former Gator coach Jim McElwain. Uh, they've got a, they played a backup quarterback a week ago. They've got a tight end that is gigantic. Yeah. And uh, 
a couple of nice wide receivers. What's what's the challenge with Central Michigan? They looked like us last Saturday. They they by far played their best game. Yeah. They they routed Akron. Um, they're a new staff like us, and so you're almost maybe feeling some of the same as game three, getting comfortable with with the the new schemes. Mm -hmm. um, did not you know? Obviously, the the quarterback that went out was very talented, but they didn't seem to miss a beat. Um, they're very multiple, so they're going to be in you know a lot of different formations, a lot of different motions, um, some two tight end sets, some one tight end sets, and then they have sort of the same feeling on defense. They're going to be in a, in a four down look. They can push into what we call a bear look, you know, where they're going to cover both your guards with the nose guard. Um, they'll play man coverage. They'll, they'll 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 keep the safeties apart and play some zone coverage. Um, so that they don't, again, you're you're going to see it all, you know. Um, so. What, what's good for our guys, we're getting into that game week mentality. Now you got to come in here on a Tuesday and right. find out what, hey, here's what they are, and let's become experts in beating these guys on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and take it to the stadium on, on Saturday. Coach, the one thing that jumped off the chart to me was their size. You can tell they're in Big Ten country, right? I mean, there, there's yes. no question that they're getting some big, strong guys, that, especially on the, front, on the line of scrimmage. They will, yeah. They're, they're going to have big dudes, and, and, uh, and, and they've got some defensive ends that can cause some issues in, in, in pass rush, but... Uh, but you know, obviously, we got some big dudes too. And uh, what's fun now this time is let's bring those, let's bring their big dudes down in, in September. And <laughs> right. if it's like anything like it was at three o'clock last Saturday when that sun's coming through that roof, uh, yeah. it, it, it'll be something that they don't have in Mount. Can Pleasant we get right a now. noon cook? A noon <laughs> kickoff? Yeah, it was. We're good where we're at. Yeah. It, it was a little warm. I saw your dad in the parking lot before the game. He was. Uh, he had beads of sweat high diving from his nose. It was a little <laughs> warm there. Uh, I think you're. I think the, the number of the last couple of years now is seventeen and three at home. So right. that's that's starting to roll a little bit, and that's this is important again here week two of this homestand. We should not lose at home. That's 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 Miami football. Our players are reminded of that all the time, and, and again, just great to be around our fans and, and, and having them create that atmosphere we need. All right, we'll continue with our University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. A, a breakdown segment is coming up next, so don't go away. Now time for our breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, this week it's all about the effort. Yeah, you know, um, it's fun to talk about scheme and some of the X's and O's in this, but if it was only X's and O's, you know, it would be the guy holding the chalkboard that, you know, the chalk, but that would win every game. And that's not the way it is because your your culture is always comes first. Mm -hmm. And and this was a game that we wanted our culture to shine through. Do we have better players? Should we be more talented? Yes, we should. But we didn't want to rely on that. We don't want to be a team that just relies on our talent. We want to rely on, on our, our work ethic, um, our toughness, you know. And there's some things that here that really showed up to that. So look, look at the situa situation right here. You know, first quarter, we go three and out. <laughs> and we talk about the weight of expectation, you know. Like, you know, gosh, you know, would that be a, a downer? You know, and how do you how do you handle that? Because you, you, you think that you should score every time you have and stop every time. Well, what never should waver is our effort and what should never waver is our toughness. So so even right now in special teams, the first time we go out there and punt, okay? So we get ourselves aligned and there's a couple of things I want to show you. First on the protection. Okay. Everyone knows Lewis Headley and, and you're starting to see his talent shine. But they try to send two guys off this back edge right mm -hmm. here. And Scott Patchen has the first one, and Realist George has the second one. Now, we talk about when we're here on, on our shield, guys, we want to send a message if everybody wants to get next to our punter. We don't want people getting next to our punter, okay? So Patchen does a great job on the first guy. The first guy kind of slows down, kind of takes himself out of the play. The second guy, he thinks he's got a chance. Watch Realist. Woo. <laughs> so right now, you're delivering a great message that Miami's come to play. Now we got a ball off, right? And again, Lewis does a great job. A lot of hang time. A lot of hang time. Now, everybody remembers the way the game ended, right? And the fun story with Jimmy Murphy scoring a touchdown at the end, right? And, and the national media is like, oh, look, you know, this former walk-on gets in the game, scored a touchdown. No, not this guy. This guy's one of our dudes. That's him right there. The first guy down the field of all the Miami Hurricanes is Jimmy Murphy. Straining. Now, let's, let's go back now. He ran from our... 47 yard line. So that's a beats his guy off the line of scrimmage. That's, that's, right. that's a 50 yard sprint down the field. The ball is, is down there. Look at DJ Ivy right here. Look at look at his strain. Strain right there. Gets a finger on the ball to ball keep it in. in. Yeah. And Jimmy Murphy puts the ball at the one yard line. What's the result? We get a three and out on defense. They punt the ball on a very short field. Offense goes right in and scores. That's team ball. So even though the offense, why you feel bad about a three and out? Don't worry. Special teams are going to make a spark play 
where your defense is going to do their job, get you the ball right back, make it 7 nothing. And more likely than not, Bethune thinks that Miami's not going to pick this up, that they're going to miss this. There's a good chance there's, to miss there, this. There's no doubt. I mean, right? look, this, this guy right now is excited, and he only sees one thing, and that's I'm going to go take care of the Australian putter. Until? Until, <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't see that coming at all. And that's, and that's you want to put that on film, that's going to discourage – you know, teams down the line of, you know, trying to get after our punter, which is, which is huge. And as you mentioned, early in the game, it's discouraged him for the rest of the afternoon. That was as close as they ever came. And, you know, and luckily to the credit of our offense, we only punted one more time. That's right. Now, defensively, the same thing comes in. Now, look, again, same thing. I don't know that our expectation was to only be up 7 nothing late in the first. Don't worry about it. Trust in your effort. Trust in your effort. And, and the things are going to happen. So, again, this play starts off not the way we want. We got some missed tackles. Okay, but watch what happens if you miss tackle against Miami. Look at the finish on this play, and 11 football players are tackling a guy, oh, by the way, behind the line of scrimmage. So to get 11 guys, and we're in man coverage, so it's not like, you know, everyone's in zone where they can just run to the ball. You know what I mean? So watch, watch, watch Al Blades right here. Al Blades is playing man coverage, defending it, sees, a, you know, sees the ball thrown, and right now, oh, I don't need to get over there. You know, here's Rob Knowles coming from center field. I don't need to get over there. Here's a corner, uh, I think Trajan Bandy. Oh, somebody else will get him. Here's our defensive line. Yeah. Oh, somebody else will get him. No way. No way. Look, look, at Sha look at Shaq Quarterman. He's just begging, please cut back, cut back, cut back. Bang, 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 bang. That looks no fun at all. You know, and that's the type of effort. Now, again, we don't ever want to have the missed tackles, and we'll clean those up. But you know when you miss, you got a bunch of friends that are coming to make it right, and I don't want to be the guy underneath that pile. And that's an case. attitude, isn't it, Coach? That's an absolute attitude. It's an absolute attitude, and that's just that's set. You know, again, culturally, every day, the way that, the way that you practice, you know what I mean. And again, watch watch Shaq Quarterman does a great job. He's tracking his eyes are low, tracking the inside hip. There's Zach McLeod and Shaq Quarterman, and again, another great example of of leading with the shoulder on tackles. Bang, bang, bang. Romeo Finley, great job. Leads with the sh the near shoulder. Jonathan Garvin leads with the near shoulder. And now it just gets worse and worse and worse for the poor guy with the ball. And coach, listen, now the first couple of weeks you were not happy with how your defense was tackling. I will say they got the message. Yeah, no, they did. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, well, the one thing we do now, look, everybody runs to the ball. You're going to miss a tackle every now and then. If you have guys not running the ball, it becomes a big play. When we all run to the ball, it becomes a, a team meeting. Okay. You know? All right, now there's some, there's some things on offense. And again, I know we, I know we spent some time talking about scheme and you know last week was fun with the rpos or whatever but this is again a, a great example of culture okay so this is jaron williams it's a play action pass his first read right now is actually to brevin jordan mm -hmm. okay and you can see brevin's got the two defenders around him not really probably going to be there right so watch jaron jaron steps up in the pocket okay has to buy time right the quarterback is responsible for his protection he's got to buy himself some time so he does but is he maintaining his ability to stay a passer or is he turning to a runner? Nope, he's staying a passer. Finds a guy, Mike Harley, because Darren's next read is out here. Correct. In here. Curl flat. The, the curl flat player is standing in front of the curl, which means there's nobody left in the flat. Mm -hmm. Gets the ball to Mike Harley. Now, that's just good football, right? But here's where the culture comes in. Cam Harris is right here, and he's got the play fake. Play fake, checks through, and checks out, right? Now, look, all of a sudden, he sees one of his teammates. How do you play without the ball? That says a lot about your team. And again, everybody can talk about it. We can wear, you know, T-shirts or headbands and wristbands or whatever. But what you do, you vote with your feet on how unselfish of a player you are. Bang. That's awesome. And so for a guy that is a running back, which means every one of his plays ends with a collision, right, when he has a ball, to create a collision for one of his teammates to get an extra five yards is really what we're talking about. And I want to bring something back, too. I want to show you something else now. Here's D. Wiggins. Okay? D. Wiggins has a go here on the backside. Look at the effort and energy that he's running with and runs right by that corner, knowing on this play he didn't get the ball. Not that he wasn't an option, mm -hmm. but doesn't get the ball, doesn't care. He's going to run his route as full speed. Guess what that happened? That corner now, guess what that means for him? That's a problem, right? So again, a great example of three guys of, of D's effort. We talk about Jaron's effort, Mike Harley getting north, and, and Cam Harris. And look what it does to the sideline. See how guys get excited. Look at DJ Dallas and, and Realist George. We make a big deal about that. You know, guys on the sideline getting excited when they see their teammates strain for each other. And Coach, DJ Scaife, we talk finish on the offensive line. That's one thing you always say. Now, he works up the field. 
stays in there, but just stays on it. Still even after the balls. Same thing. Well, here's Jakai Clark. Yep. He's, he's pulling right here. The end comes at Look at Jakai. Never Finish. comes off his guy. He ran his guy all the way across the formation, which is really, really, really yeah. impressive. Now, you, this, you'll love this play, Don. This one, this one I picked out for you. Thank you. But again, so everybody knows that, you know, that Brevin Jordan is one of the top receiving tight ends in the country, right? And I want to start this play with him. There's a lot of guys we can talk about, but let's go to the end zone. I want to start this play for him. Watch Brevin on their defensive end right here. Okay? Bang. Great block, great yep. block. Now, really, in, re in reality right now, his work is probably done. Sure. Right? That, his, that guy's not going to make the tackle. But he's not done. He's not done. He's, he's not done. done. <laughs> Look at that. Look at how he is finishing and straining on that guy. And that effort is just absolutely amazing. And, if you, again, if you can get your guys that play with the ball to play this way without the ball, that's how you know you've got an unselfish football team. And that doesn't matter about opponent. That doesn't matter about what's going on in the game. That's just, again, relying on our effort and our toughness instead of our talent. Now let me go back to the wide. All right now the old offensive lineman's going to talk. Okay, your favorite thing here. This is Corey Gaynor. There you go. And here he comes on the pull, right? The offensive lineman got in space, and he's got this linebacker right here. Now, again, boom, he's got his guy covered up. At it's the numbers. Block. At the numbers, right? Yep. Let's see where the guy ends up. At the finish, water finish, barrel. Finish, finish, at the at water bill. <laughs> and he's not alone. He's not alone. Let's go back to the little guys. Watch D. Wiggins bang on the corner. Boom. Great effort. Great effort. Still on his guy. Still on his guy. Here's Ja'Kai Clark. Watch Ja'Kai Clark come out of here. He's going to reach this linebacker right here. Boom. Cover him up. Look, the guy tries to throw him by. Has enough balance to stay in it. Still blocking the guy. Still blocking the guy. Until finally the guy calls uncle. And that's what you want. And that's how the toughness. Here's Zion Nelson pulling around for a safety, something he can do with his athleticism. Same thing, covering that guy up, making that guy retreat. But that's 290 pounds running downfield. Tackling, you know, trying to block a little squirmy guy. That is not the easiest thing to do in the world, you know. Um, and that type of effort, that type of tenacity is what makes a football team. When you talk about our offense getting confidence, that's where it's coming from. And really, Coach, it's a habit. That's, I mean, this, is, this is what the habit you want to create. This is a habit. This is no pregame hype talk this is no video this is no mantra that we sing a song this is this is your work this is our weight room this is our off-season program this is the way we coach on offense this is, this is butch berry and dan enos and all those guys and and these are just habits and again when you talk about it when you're, you're looking at a film with you know you're talking about you know third ever started center you know third third start ever second start ever as a true freshman you know what i mean sophomore you know sophomore you know, you just got a lot of exciting things. Sophomore, you got a lot of exciting things going on with the freshman quarterback handed off to the sophomore running back, you know. So these are the things. And then this final play, and again, I've mentioned a couple of these guys. These are three consecutive plays in this game, by the way. All right. And same thing here. So just this, this is a random drive. This is not going to be a touchdown. Just, just, just ball. And again, I just want to show you D. Wiggins right here playing without the ball. Sells it like it's a takeoff. This is going to be a screen pass. And that's it. So I can show you. I can show you D. Wiggins' wide receiver sweep when he runs 22 miles an hour and turns a corner, and makes and makes a great run. I'm more proud of that play because D.'s talent and his hard work gave him this. But this right here is what wins championships. You and, know. And without question, that also earned you the right to play more and more and more. To respect your teammates. That's right. You know what I mean? And by the way, look who we're blocking for. And this is what I love about football. Cam Harris, who, what did he do two plays earlier? That's right. He strained to get to the sideline to free Mike Carley. And when, and when guys know, I'll do it for you because I know that you'll do it for me, that's real. And the guys in the locker room, they sense that, and that's how you know you might have something special as a team. All right, that'll do it for Don Bailey and Coach Manny Diaz for the breakdown session.